in the presence of Paphiopedalum spicerianum. Today, I'm teaming up with Resquetzal and Lucy the Cat. Links to their channels slash videos will be in the description below. And we're going to discuss how we take care of our Paphiopedalum spicerianum in our different climates. I happen to be here in southern Spain. This video is being posted in October, so if you do see it in future a little bit further down the line, and you're wondering why maybe your Paphiopedalum spicerianum has not bloomed yet, it's possible that it has to do with the time of year. Spicerianum was named because of Spicer, who discovered it in India in the 1800s. But he was not the only one who discovered it, because there was a Chinese gentleman who also discovered it, because Spicerianum can also be found in China. And he goes by the name of Bai Chi Dulan. I hope I pronounced that correctly, forgive me if I didn't. But mainly it is found in the Assam region of India, around the area of the Eastern Himalayas, extensively in Bhutan and Myanmar, as well as, as mentioned previously, Junyan in China. Considered a hot to cool growing terrestrial or lithophytic species, and that is why I grow mine in Lekka and self-watering, because I am banking on the fact that it is lithophytic, and the closest thing that I can get to rock, apart from having to water over and over and over again, is Lekka. So this Spicerianum, my first bloom ever, I got it in 2018, and it was a tiny, tiny little fan somewhere tucked in back here, somewhere. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was so small, and I was not well pleased with the roots either, so I thought this was not gonna work. What a shame, because I've always wanted this orchid. I have not seen that many slipper orchids as such, personally, but when it comes to pictures and images and what attracts my eye, I really, really wanted the Spicerianum. So yeah, I have it in Lekka and self-watering because the lithophytic factor, the terrestrial factor as well. Terrestrial orchids and Lekka and self-watering go really, really well because if you didn't know already, Lekka and self-watering was actually invented for the purpose of terrestrial plants in general. So for me, there was a no-brainer to put all my slipper orchids into Lekka and self-watering because terrestrial and it hasn't disappointed. Oh my goodness, it was so small. I really had no hope for it when it arrived. But look at this, here we are. I am so, so happy to see this bloom. I'm so happy to be able to show this bloom. Of all the blooms of my slipper orchids, I think this is the first one I have photographed extensively. And I hope that the images are doing it justice. I find that it has so many different aspects and details and quirks. Just look at this image. It looks from this angle like a lazy-eyed amphibian. And that gorgeous velvety hood, let me show it to you from the back. I tried to take a picture of it upside down to show you what I see here and maybe you can recognize it. It looks like a surprised googly-eyed Pixar character of sorts. I really wanted to get into the hood so that you could see the speckling as well. There are so many details to this bloom. It doesn't look as though there's so much going on. And then I have a poser who couldn't stay away. He needed to be in the money shot. <laughs> so yes, that is King, my Harlequin Dachshund. <laughs> yes, but that aside, back to my initial disappointment of how small the orchid was and how apprehensive I was about being able to pull this one off. Well, look at it now. I've got more fans coming, and these are now going to bloom subsequently every year. They can bloom too to a spike. Being a first-time bloomer, that would be me expecting far, far too much in one go. I managed to get it to bloom. I feel like I am winning in this slipper genus. That stake in the back, that is only temporary. I don't have this orchid staked, but for the sake of this video, I wanted to lift the bloom up a little bit so we can see her properly because the spike is rather long and it's extremely thin. You can see that structure. And then there's quite a large bloom at the end of it in comparison to the size of the orchid herself. 
So I stuck in a stake and I hope I didn't damage any roots by doing that. But if I hadn't staked her up, we would have had a bloom that was pointing like down here and I would constantly be interfering with my hand to show her straight into the camera. And who wants that? <laughs> Let's get in a little bit closer while I talk to you about how I have taken care of this orchid since she arrived in my collection without getting distracted. Basically, what I have done in the past years is literally no fertilizer. I have been so cautious on the fertilizer front because again, it was tiny when it arrived. I didn't think I had a viable root system. So a lot of seaweed went into the pot, a lot of flushing every second to third day, sometimes with seaweed, sometimes without. As long as I was pushing the oxygen through the leka, I felt that maybe I can create enough humidity around the base of the orchid so that she can actually start to produce some roots and lo and behold, she did. She is pot bound and I'm pulling quite hard. I don't want to squeeze the tissue obviously, but she is pot bound. That is why I was quite concerned about putting a stake in the back, but here we are anyway. We'll have to wait and see when she gets repotted what really is going on in the pot. But early days, flushing, flushing, flushing. There was no break in the flushing. This orchid is not a winter rester, so very little fertilizer. Seaweed on occasions, 40 parts per million, and always at 6.3 pH. My water being RO water, as clean as possible, as often as possible and with as little fertilizer as possible because her metabolism is not exactly fast and too much fertilizer I have noticed with my other slipper orchids have developed leaf tip burn as with the example of my Phragmopedium. Just because I'm in a hotter climate, I made the mistake thinking that because I'm in a hotter climate, it'll grow a little bit faster. That's why it can take more fertilizer. That is not the case. With such a slow metabolism, it's best to err on the side of caution and just, in my opinion, don't fertilize. <laughs> and then it'll grow at its own pace, support it with some calcium magnesium, not in high, high quantities. Mine does not go above 60 parts per million of calcium and magnesium. And when I do fertilize it, not more than 100 parts per million. And that would be possibly once a month. Then, even if the reservoir still has fertilized water in it, I will take it out two days later and flush it through and keep it with clean, plain water. So very, very conservative on the fertilizer front. It is a shade lover. In my climate, I do have a lot of pockets of shade that could be possibly a little bit too dark. However, putting it outside, it would be a little bit too hot with 40 degrees Celsius during the summer, including hot winds. So it lives in my dining room all year round. At the bottom shelf of my rack, where normally in the winter it has lead lights above it, but in the summer, it is right above very cooling marble. It doesn't sit on the marble per se, but on that shelf and the coolness of the marble will then permeate up and into the pot. The Leka has an additional evaporative cooling effect, which also helps to keep the roots cool. My water is also very cool when I flush the orchid. Another factor just to keep the roots a little bit cooler. And this is all for the hot, hot months of the year, where I believe my temperatures could be a little bit too stressful for it, including the hot winds, because they will come in through the terrace door. I still want circulation around my dining room area for everything that I grow indoors, but the surface will dry out extremely quickly with those hot winds coming in. So the whole environment on the bottom shelf is to keep things as cool as possible throughout the hottest months of the year. It doesn't change for the winter. So it's always the lower shelf. The only thing in winter, it gets some supplemental LED lights. And because it is not a winter rester, I have the blue and the red lights going for it. Eight hours a day, sometimes 10. And they are right above the orchid at about 30 centimeters distance. So yes, a lot of light, but no direct sun at all. It is a perma shade lover, so to speak. And even though to my naked eye, where it is located in the summer, it all looks a little bit dark compared to what is going on outside, I do scoot the orchid forward 
towards the edge of the shelf because the sun is relatively high and will not enter that space for the hottest months of the year. As the angle of the sun changes towards fall and winter, it will really come in to that bottom shelf space. And I keep scooting the orchids back until, well, there's no more space to scoot them back. But the winter sun by that time is a lot weaker. So I do dare a little bit of direct sun, as you can see here. You know, a little bit of sun is touching the leaves and that's precisely what would happen when it is indoors. I have had absolutely no pest issues with this orchid. I've never seen a mealybug on it. I've never seen scale on it. And I haven't even seen ants on it. Considering how many ants I get during the growing season, it's like ant central here. Not a single ant on it either. All year round, I continue to flush. Sometimes I have missed the mark and the reservoir was empty. What I try to avoid, really, really avoid, is that my microfiber in the pot goes dry. If that goes dry and I've missed the mark to that degree, then I'm really cross with myself because I never ever want this orchid to be without. I'm very much looking forward to potting this up, but I don't think it's gonna happen next year either. There's plenty of room in the pot for the orchid to continue to develop. And yes, it might be pot bound now because of how many roots it's got, but all in all, there's enough space. The only thing is more water and more flushing as there are more roots in the pot and the orchid gets bigger and bigger. I would love to get it into my classical setup with the mask and the inner pot, and that would stop me from having to use pots where I have to hot glue the holes in the base just to make sure that these two components fit. However, my preferences aside, if the orchid is doing well and it has room in the pot and I can keep up with the watering, I'm not going to move her. Of course, there is absolutely no fragrance. I have as yet to discover whether a Spicerianum would be fragrant or not. And now we've got a little bit of sunshine on the bloom. It's kind of washing out the colors. Maybe like that. Remarkable is all I can say. This hood is so velvety soft. It is so beautiful. I love, love every single detail about this bloom. Some slippers you're like going, eh, no, that's too big, that's too small, that's too veiny, there's too many markings, that's too fuzzy. Some look like they haven't been shaved. But this bloom here, everything. Front and back and sideways. Love it. I want to say thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you found this little quick video care of Spicerianum interesting. If you have one, let me know. If you make videos, let me know. If you're interested in joining in the next care collab for the care of this orchid, please also let me know in the comments below or send me an email and then we'll be in touch and I'll incorporate you on the care collab database. If you have any questions about this orchid that I did not cover in enough detail or I did not circle back to, also, that's what comment sections are for. I embrace them. And if you have doubts with regards to my setup, Lekka and self-watering and prefer another option as to how it's possible to grow this orchid successfully, I will direct you to the description below. There is Res Quetzal and Lucy the cat who also grow this orchid and they have different grow environments and different setups. And maybe there is something there that would be of use to you and your preference. And finally, let me say thank you so very, very much for joining me and my Paphiopedalum Spicerianum. Thank you so very much for your time. Have yourself a beautiful, beautiful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.